Hey guys, it's Ron. So in the last video we got uh, we got access to our mail server uh, by adding static NAT entries on the outside of this router. Uh, but that opened up a, a problem that now port 25 and port uh, 110 are always mapped uh, coming into this server. So the outside world can easily hit you know our web server and, and that that can be a problem so instead what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna enable these guys to access these almost directly okay and so we'll do that by building a tunnel uh, from this router to that router okay so to do that let's bring it up we're still gonna leave uh, NAT on in this direction so these guys can continue to access uh, the internet but we're going to instead of uh, using those static entries here we're going to build a tunnel so they can go directly through the tunnel and they'll come out here as if they were on the local network okay so enable we'll do a config T so we'll do an interface tunnel and then usually you give a you know a tunnel number so I'll just do tunnel zero all right, so tunnel zero is changed up. I'm going to give it an IP address. We'll give it 172.31.255.1. Uh, and now let's go to 255, 255, 252. So this is going to be a point to point uh, kind of IP scheme. All right, now I have seen uh, in cases in the real world, you can't do it here in Packet Tracer, but in the real world, you can do. Uh, if you have a loopback address already assigned to the router, you can do an IP unnumbered loopback zero. All right, so your tunnel would just basically reuse the same IP as what your loopback address would, but Packet Tracer doesn't allow it. So, uh, so I've got my IP address assigned. Now I need to do a tunnel source. All right, so this is basically what interface is my tunnel going to go out? All right. So I'm going to use FA00 because that's my how I'm accessing the ISP. So that's also going to be the way that the tunnel goes. And then tunnel destination. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to point uh, the tunnel to this IP right here. So my tunnel is basically going to build out through the internet, come back. And it's going to hit and terminate right here on that interface. So I know that IP to be 10.0.0.2. All right. Line protocol changed to up. And then to make it easy, I'm going to run EIGRP across that tunnel. All right. So I'll do router EIGRP1 network 172.31.255.0. Uh, uh, 000. Dot three network and one nine two dot one six eight dot two dot zero. All right, so basically I've told it EIGRP should run uh, on that this interface uh, and the tunnel interface. Okay, now typically I would come back in and do a, a no auto, so no auto summary. I like to do no passive interface default. Uh, and then just turn it on on the tunnel. But the problem here is, if you look here, passive interface, it doesn't actually allow me to select a tunnel. So I, I can't do a no passive interface tunnel zero. So I'll just do a uh, VLAN, uh, yeah, VLAN 10. So I've now made VLAN 10 passive. Passive interface, uh, FA00. All right, so basically what I've told it is that I don't want to see router advertisements here, and I don't want to see advertisements here unless it's going over the tunnel. Okay? Oops. Anyway, so that should be good if I've configured everything correctly. So we'll do an exit or end. How about that? Close that out bring up my core here and I'm going to basically configure the same thing config T uh, if I could type interface T0 which is tunnel 0 
IP address 172.31.255.1, 255, 255, 252. All right, IP uh, source FA00, or how about tunnel source? That would make a whole lot more sense. Uh, tunnel destination, uh, we'll send this to 10.0.0. Uh, let's see, what are we over there? We're on the eight networks, so nine and 10, so it's 10. So tunnel, so the tunnel typically will show up uh, as soon because FA00 is up. So just because the tunnel came up isn't always an indication that things are working. Uh, but let's do a router EIGR, EIGRP1. And if EIGRP builds across it, we know that the tunnel's working. So EIGRP1, we'll do net, no auto network. Uh, 172.31.255.0. We'll do 0.0.0.3. And we built a neighbor. So that's that's a, a good sign that uh, the tunnel's working. We'll do network 172.16.0.0. Uh, 0.0.0. And I think that's a, uh, uh, a 240. So that's uh, 16, so 15 right there. Uh, and then network 192.168.0.0. Uh, um, we'll leave that. End. Show IP route. All right. So we have oops. We have a, a dynamic or a, a dual entry for one or 192.168.2.0. All right. So that's right there. So these two are talking over EIGRP. So that's that's good. We can do the same thing here. Build another tunnel. Interface T0, IP address 172.31.255.C4 is the next work. So 5 and then 6. 255.252. Two, five, two, five, two, five, two. Uh, tunnel source FA00. Zero, zero. Tunnel destination uh, 10.0.0.2. Router EIGRP1. No auto. Uh, network 172.31.255. Uh, this is the 4 network. So 0.0.0.3. Network. 192.168.1.1.0 and alright so let's go ahead and add this the other tunnel address here oops interface uh, T1 so we already have T0 I'm creating now a tunnel 1 so IP address 172.21 or dot three one dot one how about 255.5, uh, 255, 255, 252. Uh, let's see, uh, tunnel source, phase zero, zero. Tunnel destination, one or 10.0.0. I think that's four networks, five and six. So it should be six. Router. All right, so let's see. I need to add that IP to my router, EIGRP. One network, 172.31.255. This is the four network, 0.0.0.3. And we build a neighbor. Show IP route. So that's good, right? So we've got our entries for those two as well. So now, I'm not going to go through the whole process of, of setting up email again, but uh, if you'll look, so we had to go to mail.bc.ddns uh, before, 
uh, so that it could use that outside address. Now we should have access to the actual internal address directly, which we do. All right. So I could easily uh, go in and uh, let's see, configure my email instead of going here. I got a 172.16.0.2. Uh, 172.16.0.2 save uh, let me compose I don't even know if this is going to work mode 1 at uh, uh, bc.ddns uh, test folks I haven't tried this one it says send success so let's do a retrieve retrieve success now it's the same person, so I, I don't really know if uh, it's going to work or not. But uh, basically, that's it, man. Now we can hit it directly. So instead of going all the way out here, I could change my uh, my DNS so that it points to this guy. I can change my mail so that it points to this guy. And if we look, uh, let's bring up simulator mode. If I go from here, oh, there's there's my email. Or that might be an old email. I don't know. Looks like it's probably an old one. Uh, let's go ahead and try to receive mail. So, wait a second. I must have opened up a different computer. Maybe that's what it was. All right, so let's go figure this guy out. So. I sent it to remote one, but yeah, I probably changed the wrong computer. So 172.16.0.1, 172.16.0.2, my bad. Save, delete. We'll go ahead and go ahead and try to receive. So I'm receiving mail pop 3.172.16.0.2. And if we'll look, here's what's going to happen. All right, so it gets here inbound. It's going to 172.16.0.2. Outbound, notice here, it automatically changed it, okay? And the reason is because we are in a GRE tunnel, okay? So it's basically wrapped this packet in a GRE packet and then sends a GRE packet out. All right. So what we'll see here is that uh, it's still going to port 10, but we're wrapped inside this GRE tunnel. Okay. So the GRE tunnel is going to go out. It'll go through the whole ISP thing just like it normally was uh, doing before in the NAT days hits here it's going to unwrap it so inbound it's in that GRE tunnel outbound we're no longer in a GRE tunnel all right so the GRE uh, wrapper got taken off and it goes up to our server okay and and the beauty of the thing is is that uh, we didn't have to open up those ports uh, you know port 25 and port uh, 110 on our router to allow that traffic in. The GRE tunnel kind of takes care of that. It basically allows your users on this side to ignore the fact that they have to go through all of this to access this. It's just like they're on the local network to it. That GRE tunnel uh, makes it look like we're going right from this router to that router even though it had to go through all of this. Now so that's a, a step in the right direction. We, we didn't have to open those ports up. But the GRE portion of it uh, is still, uh, it's not encrypted or anything like that. So if someone were to intercept our packets here, they would still be able to read the email. Okay. Uh, the, next, the next part, and what would even be better, is to then apply IPsec. So anything going into that tunnel uh, or... Uh, or maybe you don't even use the tunnel, but you use IPsec to build a connection from router to router. And that way, you still have that feeling of being on the local network, but everything that exists out here uh, 
is encrypted so that uh, no, you know, somebody captures a packet, it doesn't mean anything. You know, it's, it's wrapped so that it knows how to get there, but all the real data is encrypted. So that's, that's uh, for a later lab, uh, but I just thought, you know, that that's kind of a, uh, the direction that you kind of want to move in. You know, we started with being able to use NAT uh, to get packets up to here, uh, but that presented some vulnerability. So while it, it was it was a, a workable solution, you know, it it opened us up to some things that we didn't we didn't want. So we added GRE. GRE made it so we didn't have to open those ports up. But uh, we're still not quite there. We're sending our our local email traffic out over the internet where it could be intercepted and read. So the next step then will be to add IPsec so that, yeah, we still use this part of the network as a transport, but everything that goes in this direction is encrypted so it keeps our data safe. So I hope you got something out of lab and uh, I'd appreciate any feedback. Thanks.